there and welcome to another beautiful and exciting episode of Science of the Gospel. My name is Buki Bash and I am your host on the show. If you're just hitting this show for the very first time and you're wondering what this show is about, now this is the show where we get to talk about science facts and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring the science like we know it in the textbooks, in the labs, and all the things that we study in the world. And then we bring the word of God together in a way that you can understand. We're going to have an exciting time today. But right now, let's go on a short break. And when we return, we will get back to the show. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. If you are just tuning in, this is Science of the Gospel and you're just tuning in just at the right time because we're just about to get into the topic of the day. And if you know anyone that would love to be watching right now, I think this is the right time for you to call them, text them and tell them that Bookie Bash is live on Lower XP and they should get to watch Science of the Gospel. And like you know we always do, every week we bring you exciting topics on science and the Word of God. And then we show you in a way that you can understand. It's pretty exciting. Okay, so what are we talking about today? Bookie Vash, can you just get straight to the topic? Okay, today we're going to be looking at not just physical science, but of course we're going to be looking at social science. But we'll start with the physical science. And then we'll be talking about perception, perspective, and lights. Because the subject of perception, perspective, and light, they're actually interwoven and they are interconnected. So we'll first of all look at it from the perspective of physics, and then we'll look at it from the perspective of mind, which is the social sciences. And then we'll then dive into the Word of God and see what, a, what, what the Word of God says, and then we'll bring it home to us on how we should use this reality in our lives every day. So are you ready? I'm sure you are. Okay, so first off, we're looking at the subject of perception. And when you say the word perception, we have our sensory receptors that help us perceive the physical world. So you have your eyes, you have your ears, you have your nose, your skin, and your tongue that help you taste. But right now, we want to zoom in, zoom in on the eye because we're looking at the subject of light. We're looking at the subject of perception and perspective. And then when you hear the word perception, what comes to mind oftentimes is how you view something, your, your position on a subject, your, your view on a matter. It's more really connected to how you see, how you see what you see. So because it's about how you see, we are zooming in on the eye. Now, the eye is an organ in your body that helps you collect information from your environment that enables you to see. But the way the eye functions, the eye needs light because without light, you cannot see anything physical. So light enables your eye to function. But then right in your eye, there are things within your eye that enable you to actually collect that information. So let's zoom in a little bit into the eye and then we're talking about what is in the eye. There is something in the eye that I want to zoom in on a little bit today in our topic today on science of the gospel. And that is the lens. That is the lens in your eye. And 
of course, when you, when you study science, there are different kinds of lenses. You have the simple lens and the compound lens, but the more popular ones are the biconcave and the biconvex lens, even though we have more compound lenses. But I just want us to zoom in on that because the one you have in the human eye is actually the biconvex lens. And it helps us to focus images on our retina so we can see. So all that happens because light rays directed into our eyes then converges. So now the, the biconvex lens is a converging lens that actually converges the light rays at a point in our retina and then we are able to see. But then we know that our sight is not really done in our eyes because that information goes there and then it goes from there to our brain. But then we know that the brain is not really the mind, but it's the organ that represents the mind. And then it processes the information and gives us a feedback. And then we say, this is red, or this is blue, or this is a cup, or this is water, or this is whatever, whatever we have seen. Let's just, take, let's just say a color, for example. We say this is color red or color blue. Now, all that happens because of light. And that happens because there is a lens in our eye that converges the light ray. Because what the lens does is the moment the light hits the lens, if it's a divergent lens, it diverges the light ray. If it's a converging lens, it converges the light ray. So what you have in the human eye is a converging lens. It converges the light rays to, at a focal point. Now that focal point is where the image is formed in our eye. But really, most times the image formed in our eye is actually upside down, but we don't look at things upside down. That's because by the time that information gets to our brain and it sends us the feedback, we see things standing upright. Now, my point here is this. The things that you see physically, it's a function of how the lens in your eye functions, how it you know, arranges the light rays. Now, some people suffer from short-sightedness or long-sightedness, meaning that some people can't see things that are too close to them, and some people can't see things when it is too far from them. And that is because the image form doesn't land on the retina. So now they use corrective lenses in such a way that by the time the person puts on the lens, it helps to correct that, that image in such a way that the image then lands on the person's retina, and then the image is clear for the person to see. So now, what I want you to understand is this. Now, what you see is a function of the lens that you're using to see. Now, let's take a microscope, for example. Now, in the microscope, you have, you know, multiple lenses, unlike your eye, where you just have the sim single lens that you see with. But then, you are able to see the very microscopic part of an element. It could be wood, it could be a leaf, it could be a flower, it could be, an, it could be a tiny ant. But then that, that tiny thing becomes so big that you would have, you'll be able to see the things that you will not have been able to see with your optical eyes. And that is how it is possible for you to take the, somebody's blood sample into the lab and then they look at what is in the blood and they're able to see the blood cells, okay, if there's any parasite, if there's anything. All these things happen because of the power of lenses and even in the in, in the photographic camera you have some lenses that take pictures and they are not so very sharp some are blurry and some are like very sharp now this is the power of a lens the power of a lens really it, it really gives you an experience of sight it gives you a real and true experience of sight but really bringing it back to you bringing it home to you what you see is because of your lens and that is a product of your perception in the end because first of all you need light and then you need a lens and then the lens has to converge that uh, the, the information in the light because in the end it is the light that is carrying the information into your eye so all that all that all that ray of light is going into your eye with information with data and it is that data your mind is going to use so that's that's why i said that today we're not just going to be looking at the physical science we're going to tra tra transcend from the physical science into the social sciences and we're also going to be looking at the subject of perception because perception is not a physical thing it, it now transcends beyond what is physical to what is in the mind the mind is an intangible substance but we know it's there 
oftentimes, in fact, the greater number of times, all the activities that happen in our mind is attributed to our brain because the brain is the organ of the mind. But we know that the mind is not the brain. So the mind is something that is in, in a metaphysical space, but it helps us have a physical experience. Remember the topic we're talking about today. We're talking about perception, perspective, and light. Now, if it is your mind that helps you perceive, it gives you a perception. That means your mind also gives you a perspective. So when it's a physical thing, when it's a tangible thing, you call it a perception. When you see something that is big or is small or is color red or color black, that is your perception. But when it's like an intangible thing, maybe it's an issue, you, you, you better say perspective because that is the way you see it. So now, if that is the way you see it, that means there is something that you have that gives you a perspective. Because something in your eye that helps you see, that forms your perception, should also be in the eyes of your mind that gives you a perspective. And guess what that is? You can already guess. I know you can already guess. It's a lens. <laughs> it's a lens of mind. It's a lens of mind. And it's a lens of mind that actually gives you a perspective. And we're going to talk more about that. Let's just go on a short break. You just digest all that information. Let's go on a short break. And when we return, we're, t we're going to talk about the lens of your mind. Don't go away. <music> Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel and we have been talking about light, lens, perception and perspective. And this is a whole blend of physical science and social science and we're still going to be connecting it to the Word of God. But here now it's time for us to talk about the lens of your mind. We've spoken about the lens of your eye but for you to have a perspective there has to be a lens of mind. And the lens of mind does actually work with lights. Remember how I just explained about the light rays coming into your eyes and then it converges the information into a focal point and then it lands on your retina and then it forms an image. Something similar actually does happen with your lens of mind because you form a perspective based on information that you receive. Now, information coming to your physical eyes comes through lights and then of course your mind processes it. But when it is information that is not physical or tangible, maybe what, what you read or what somebody said or, or an image of something that you saw that communicated something, everything has information. Everything comes with information. So all that thing now gives you a perspective. Now, the power of perspective is this. Your perspective or your perception creates your experience. What you see something as is what it is to you. Sometimes you could be looking at something and then because you don't have a, maybe you're not experiencing short-sightedness or long-sightedness, in your mind you're like, okay, I, I can see this thing, it's so clear to me, so clear to me. But someone that is having maybe an issue with, maybe he's short-sighted or long-sighted, he's like, I can't see it, it's blurry, it's not clear, I'm wondering, ah, but I can see this thing, this thing is so clear. So now the moment that person brings a lens that helps them to correct their sight, they then see clearly what you what you might be seeing clearly or the other person can see now it's so important to see with the right lens because the way we look at the world is so important when we look with a wrong lens we will not we may not see clearly we may see blurry we may not even see correctly so the lens with which we view the world is so important the lens with which we view the world actually determines how we experience the world now imagine you, you go into a, st a stadia, for example, and I mean, let's say the main bowl. The main bowl is a very big place. You have the field, you have the sitting area, and even in the sitting area, you have the part that is closer to the ground. You have the part that is higher from the ground. Now remember, I'm talking about a, it's a stadia, the main bowl of a stadia. So it is a location. So now there is somebody is, that is in the main bowl of the stadia and is standing right in the middle of the field. Now, now, now let's take for example, there's somebody else in that same stadia that is sitting at the highest point in the terrace. They are in the same location 
in the stadia. They are both in the same location in the stadia. But because of where they are standing, their experience of the stadia is different. They are pers their perspective on the stadia is different. If, 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 you, if, you want to, if you want to have the experience of one that is standing in the middle of the field, you actually have to stand in the middle of the field to know what it feels like. Everybody can be on earth, but not everybody would have the same experience of earth. And what determines that is their perception and their perspective. How they view it, where they are looking at it from, and how they are looking at it. What they are looking at it through. Their positioning. So, your lens of mind is so important. So, even though we are all on the face of the earth, where are you standing? How do you see? With which lens are you seeing from? So, mind, if, you're, if the physical lenses in your eye could actually make you see clearly or make you see blurry, you can tell that whatever lens of mind that you're, you're using in your life would either make you see life clearly or see life blurry. Ask yourself, are you really seeing life clearly as you should? Because your perception would actually create your experience. What lens are you using? What kind of lens are you using? You know, th there's a scripture that comes to mind and that, that says to the pure, all things are pure. I think it's in the book of Titus. And what you think something is, is what it is to you. The most important thing for a person is to actually look at things with the lens of God's word. The word of God is a type of lens. And the word of God is also a type of light. I mean, it's like a two-in-one because the word of God is everything. You can, you, can, you can use it as a lens and it's also a kind of light because the word of God is light. But then there is a way the light of God's word interacts with the lens of God. It gives you the true and pure image of the truth. And a combination of the light of God's word and God's lens gives you the true image. It lands right on the focal point of the retina and you see clearly. I mean, when you look at, when you use your eyes of mind. Now, I'm just using the science of how we see to make you see that your experience of life is actually fundamentally based on number one. The first thing, the light you are using. Because the light you are using also interacts with the lens. Now, if you think about it, when light, when light travels in air, it travels at a certain speed. The moment it, it, it hits the lens, it is refracted. And so, if it's a converging lens, of course, the refraction now converges at a focal point. Now, when you're using a right light and a right lens, the result you get, the focal point of everything will be the truth. That is the result of having a perception of God, of using the lens of God and the light of God, you are going to get a perfect, a right, a correct image of truth. Whatever it is that you see without God's lens and God's light, it will still be an image, but it may not be correct. You will still see because everybody has a right to their opinion. Everybody has a right to view things they want. Everybody has a right to say whatever they want to say. But that doesn't necessarily mean that your perspective or your perception is the truth. The only thing that brings truth is the light of God and the lens of God. When you use the light of God and the lens of God, the focus, the image, the product that you will get is truth. And for us, we should learn from the science that in the end, what we should be after, how we should frame our minds, is, should be along God's truth. The Bible says we should not be conformed to the world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In fact, let me say it this way. We should be transformed by the changing of our lens, <laughs> the eye that we, with which we see the world. Because the way, as long as we are seeing the world in a particular way, that's what the experience is going to be. But for us to change the experience, we need to change the lens. Some of you may have been, you know, receiving God's word, but you're probably not, not using the right lens. So you are absorbing the light. You are absorbing the light. But then your lens is not correct. So probably you're supposed to be using a converging lens, but you're using a diverging lens. And a diverging lens does produce an image, but it produces a virtual image. And so the word of God may be producing results in your life, but you're not seeing it. 
because the image is not real. It's virtual, but it's there, but it's not real. So by, but you, when you change the lens to a converging lens, it converges and then it becomes real. It becomes material. So the lens with which you see the world has to be God's lens. You need to see with God's eye. You need to see from God's point of view. And that's why I, I gave the example about the stadia. There is a point of view in every place. When you look at a very large space, there are different points of view. And those different points of view create different experiences of the same place. So, as an individual, you need to make up your mind to always take God's point of view in everything. And God's point of view is God's lens. That's what I mean by the lens. God's point of view is God's lens. God's point of view is God's light. It's the light and it's also the lens at the same time. It's because it's God's word. The product of that is true. The true and clear and accurate image that you should have. And that's when you say you can really see. Because a person that has a, um, um, an eye problem or a faulty eye is suffering from some sort of blindness. It may not be outright blindness. It may not be total darkness. Because in some cases, that's the case. For some people, th there's no light at all. Now I'm, I'm, now, I'm even talking about someone that even has some kind of light. You even have the light of God's word, but then the lens is not even correct. So you still see some things, but it's not really clear. So, but then when you have the correct lens, the image is super clear. When you have the right, right light, the image is correct. But when you have the right lens, the image is clear. When you have the wrong light, the image may not even be correct. So when you're, when you're looking at things with, with, a, with, the, with another type of light, that is not the word of God because there are different kinds of light. But when it is the light of God's word, it's the correct light. When it is placed with the correct lens, it gives you the clear and perfect image that you should see. So ask yourself, what lens have I been viewing the world? What do I think the world is? What does God say the world is? The world is what God says it is. Believe it and mold your mind in that light. Mold your mind in that way. So you can have that experience. Because your, your experience of life is fundamentally framed by your perceptions and your perspective. Let the word of God be the one to mold your life, mold your perceptions and your perspective. So that your life experience would be what it is, what it should be rather what the word of God has promised, what the salvation of God has promised. And the beautiful thing is this, when you absorb the light of God's word with the lens of God, the benefits and the blessings of salvation will be so manifest in your life. And you will be so amazed. And that is how God expects us to live as believers. It's a beautiful thing to know that. It's a beautiful thing to, to know exactly how to see. And, you know, understanding the science and the physics behind it. And seeing that really and truly, th there is a lens of mind that we should, we should have. And it comes when we renew our mind with truth. When we renew our mind with God's word. I can go on and on and on talking about this. But let me just take a break right now. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we will wrap up the show. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. This is Still Science of the Gospel and we have been talking about perception, perspective, lenses and light. And we have seen that the lens with which we view the world does affect our experience of life. And now you might be watching me right now and you're wondering, okay, which lens have I been using? Which lens have I been using? First of, let me give you a light. And the first light I want to give you now is the light of truth. And the light of truth that really brings life. The light of truth that is light. Because light is the first thing before you even talk about the lens. Because light is that which defines and light is that which describes. First, first comes the light, then comes the lens. And the light I'm going to give you now is the light of truth. And what is that truth? It is the light of truth that you can have the life of God. You can share God's life. And that is the number one truth. That is the number one light that every human person in the world should know. 
Because remember I told you, the light and the lens forms truth. I'm bringing a light of truth to you right now. And I'm telling you that the, the, the very first truth that you should know is the fact that the life of God is available. God's life is available to you to receive. And how are you going to receive this life? It's just by believing in what Jesus did. Jesus came into the world. He died. And he was raised again by the glory of the Father. If you believe this truth, you would have eternal life. Now, having eternal life brings you into a whole new world. It ushers you into the kingdom of God. It takes you out of the kingdom of darkness where there is no light at all. And then it brings you to a place of light where there is bright sunshine and you can experience life. So if you're not in the kingdom of God, you're not even in light. So you can't even talk about lenses refracting and reflecting and you getting a clear image. Someone that doesn't have the life of God is in, is in total darkness. And so the first thing you need to do is to come into light. And then when you come into light, that is where your life really begins. Now, all, what do you need to do? The Bible says that if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. That translates you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Are you ready to do this today? All you need to do is to believe. And if you believe, then I want you to say this prayer after me. I want you to mean it with all your heart because God is going to hear you if you believe. And if you believe, say this prayer after me. You say, oh Lord God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that he died and he was raised by the glory of the Father. I confess today that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. By faith, I receive eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Congratulations to you if you just said that prayer. You have been translated from darkness to light. There's one more thing you need to do. You need to change your lens. You need to change your lens and start viewing things as the word of God says. So you have to transform your mind. You need to get to church. You need to get to church. Look for a Christ adversity church near you or you can call the number showing on the screen and you can send us an email we can direct you on how to help change your lens so that you can see things clearly and accurately just as the word of god has directed we want to hear from you send us an email or call us let us know you give your heart to christ let us know that you have received the life of god we can help lead you and guide you to the right place you should go and how you can grow and how you can change your lens and experience the best of the eternal life that you have received i hope you have enjoyed today's show because i've had a blast i've had a wonderful time and i hope you did also but i'm going to be coming to you next week because this is all i can take for the show this week but i'm going to be coming to you next week with another exciting episode please ensure you send us your feedback on the show send us an email call us we would like to really really hear from you we would love that but then Always remember to make it a date on Science of the Gospel where we bring the Word of God and the science fact together and bring it to you in a way that you can understand. But for now, I'm going to be signing out. I'm still your ever-excited host, Bookie Bash, signing out. God bless you.